Hello everybody, welcome to this uh, massive open online course on solid fluid operations. So, in the previous uh, two lectures we are uh, actually uh, discussed about the uh, solid mixing and also assessment of the solid mixing in the module of that uh, solid fluid mixing in a system. So, in this lecture we will try to uh, understand the mixing and agitation of the fluids or slurries. So, in this lecture the mixing of fluids mechanism flow pattern standard design of mixing vessel with agitators will be discussed. Uh, as we know that the mixing of fluids uh, with other miscible or immiscible uh, liquids gas and with the fine particles is important for separation of contaminants in liquid, separation of gas by solvents, separation of fine particles from slurry or muddy water or wastewater treatment etcetera. Not only that in presence of you know slurry that means catalyst particle with the liquid you will see that we are producing different hydrocarbons just by cracking heavy hydrocarbons to the lighter hydrocarbons. And there we are uh, actually uh, following that procedure of fischer tropsch synthesis. There itself the gas liquid and solid three phase will be come in contact to uh, you know give you that yield of different hydrocarbons. So, there itself uh, the process uh, you know yield depends on that mixing of that you know slurry in that particular reactor. Okay. So, that is why this mixing of solids or uh, slurry is very important. So, here we can say that uh, we uh, learned about that what is uh, mixing, what is blending, what is you know agitation like this and what is the difference uh, uh, among these you know three terms there we are actually discussing in the previous lectures itself also. So, blending uh, miscible liquids to for the uh, you know you can say that uh, homogeneous even homogeneous solutions there uh, it is very important and also dispersing of gas in a liquid as a dispersed phase of bubbles that is also important in that case bubbles will be you know mixed or randomly distributed in the bed that based on that kinetic energy you know dissipation inside the bed and based on which you will see that liquid will be flowing uh, randomly into the you know vessel even uh, you will see that uh, uh, it will be you know flowing at a certain pattern and that pattern uh, depends on that kinetic energy. And because of that energy transported that gas whatever will be dispersed in the dispersed phase of bubbles also will be you know distributed inside the bed and based this is that depends on that mixing of the liquids there. Also you will see that it is passing on immiscible liquid in another liquid to form and uh, you know that emulsion or uh, suspension of fine drops or particles oil in uh, suppose dispersing in to pour its uh, fine drop in water like this. And also suspension of minute particles in the atmosphere as an aerosol. And also you will see that for promoting heat and uh, mass transfer between phases this mixing is very important. And uh, whenever you are going to uh, disperse that liquid drops in a gaseous medium especially for that you know application of physical operation where the liquid drop will be you know absorbing uh, some gaseous contaminants uh, there in the drop. So, those type of you know operation actually uh, depends on that dispersion phenomena of the liquid. Also you will see that fluidizing powder in a gaseous medium there itself that particulate materials will be you know dispersing inside the bed of the fluidized bed that is catalyst particle in presence of which you will see that there will be a conversion of hydrocarbon to uh, different you know uh, other chemicals there. So, in that case that mixing of that solid particles as a catalyst will be you know that uh, important. So, you have to learn that uh, why that mixing is very important and also where it can be applicable and how that mixing phenomena will be you know influencing on that you know yield of that reaction or physical operation there. Now, already we have discussed the different mechanism of that mixing some will be you know the turbulent mixing, laminar mixing and molecular diffusion. 
those you know mechanism are very uh, effective you will see that in that case uh, turbulent mixing you will, if you are talking about that you know mixing is due to the turbulent flow uh, which result in random fluctuation of that fluid velocity at any given point within the system and in that case fluid velocity at a given point changes in you know three directions x y and z and in case of laminar mixing you will see that uh, the mixing of two dissimilar liquids through laminar flow that is applied shear stresses the interface between them you will see that uh, uh, will be forming and because of which that distribution of that you know contaminants particles uh, among this you know through these interfaces that will be transported and uh, you will see that mixing happens because of that diffusion of that solid particles over that interfaces. And also you will see that suitable for liquids which require moderate mixing there uh, you will see that this type of laminar mixing phenomena will be you know required. And in case of molecular diffusion that mixing at molecular level in which molecules diffuse due to the thermal motion. So, these are three uh, different mechanism uh, based on which you can get that you know mixing. And whenever you are talking about that uh, mixing of that solids or slurries or liquids there, there will be certain equipment on which that you know or in which that uh, this uh, mixing will happen. Already we have discussed that different equipments uh, uh, for solid solid mixing, but here agitators will be called as a mixing uh, equipment where uh, that uh, slurry that means liquid and solid will be you know mixed in a agitator or you can say that liquid liquid mixing will be there or gas liquid mixing will be there. So, that equipment is called agitators. So, agitators basically a container or it is called vessel with a mixing device, mixing device may be impeller as shown in figure here uh, uh, in this uh, slide is used to mix the liquids with other phases like you know gas, liquid and fine particles in a certain pattern. And that the bottom of this vessel is made round to eliminate sharp corners into which fluid currents would not penetrate there. And the fluid's depth is controlled approximately equal to the diameter of the vessel. So, this is the you know typical you know mixing vessel. You will see uh, there will be some accessories of this mixing vessels, one will be motor that uh, certain speed of this motor will give you that rotation of this impeller and uh, this impeller rotation will give you the certain fashion of that you know fluid element or solid element or slurry element inside the vessel or inside this you know agitator. And uh, there also you will see that to get that intense mixing or uh, certain fashion of that you know uh, movement of that fluid or slurry there will be certain you know uh, baffle uh, will be you know as a mechanical provision will be you know attached here to get a certain fashion of that flow. And uh, also some jacket here uh, suppose if you want to do in a uh, constant temperature or pressure that there will be certain you know jacket on which uh, or based on which you can get that uh, isothermal you know mixing. And there will be some uh, deep leg uh, through which that liquid or slurry uh, will be uh, inserted into the vessel and there will be a shaft uh, on which that you know impeller will be mounted and then it will be rotating at a certain speed by a rope motor. And also you know that there will be a drain valve uh, through which that you know after mixing it will be you know drained out. And there will be certain uh, liquid in uh, surface uh, that means up to certain level of that you know slurry or liquid uh, will be maintained inside the vessel. So, this is the typical you know the geometry of that agitators. And in that case to you know give you that mixing of that slurry or liquid in that agitator there will be a certain mixing device it is called impellers. So, the impeller uh, creates a uh, you know flow pattern in systems causing the fluid to circulate through the vessel and uh, return eventually to the impeller. The impeller which generates currents parallel with the axis of that impeller shaft it will be called as axial flow impellers. Whereas, if it generates currents in a tangential or radial direction, it will be called as radial flow impellers. 
and uh, this uh, impeller uh, for the mixing is uh, classified based on shape and piece into three types such as you know propeller, turbines and paddles. Here in this picture shown some three blade uh, turbine, open straight blade turbine, blade disc turbine, even vertical curved uh, blade turbine, even pieced uh, blade turbines are there. Here it is shown that A this is basically the three blade turbine mixer, B is basically open straight blade turbine, C is called blade disc turbine and D here which is basically the vertical curved uh, blade turbine and here is the uh, pieced blade turbine. So, all these provisions will give you the certain fashion of that you know pattern in the system which will cause uh, the fluid to circulate through the vessel. And also you will see that uh, different types of flow pattern will be you know created uh, in that you know uh, agitators or uh, vessels. The flow pattern in the agitated vessels depends on basically type of impeller, what type of impeller that you will use that we have discussed in the previous slide that there are different type of impellers are there. And also characteristics of the fluid whether it will be you know that highly viscous fluid or uh, less viscous fluid or it is a slurry or then others. Even uh, uh, size and proportions of tank, baffles and impellers. So, here also the geometry of these tanks also it is you know important to get that certain flow pattern. Also you will see that this flow pattern depends on the variations of velocity components either in the radial or axial directions. So, this uh, radial and axial directions of this you know uh, fluid element with certain velocity that will actually give you that certain flow pattern. Basically, two flow patterns are uh, important one is called vortex formation and another is called you know swirling formation. You will see that here in this picture that how vortex is formed here and how swirling is formed here. And you will see that whenever vortex will be formed in that case the shaft is uh, you know when it will be vertically aligned there and centrally located in the vessel you will see that there will be tangential flow that follows the circular path around the shaft and uh, it will create a vortex in the liquid for specially flat bladed turbine. Also you can get it piece bladed turbine or propeller. The vortex is uh, developed when a lighter fluid like here or uh, other gases uh, or you can say that kerosene is flows a circular path around the shaft then you will that you will get that vortex. At higher impeller speed, so the vortex may be so deep that it reaches the impeller. So, this uh, vortex formation basically uh, depends on that orientation of this you know shaft. If it is vertically mounted or inclined, then you will see that the vortex formation will be different shape. So, in that case you know that when it will be you know vertical and centrally located in the vessel the tangential flow follows a circular path around the shaft and there will be a formation of vortex. And as higher impeller speeds will reach there you will see the depth of that vortex will be more. Whereas, uh, swirling is another uh, pattern uh, this basically that uh, perpetuates uh, that stratification at the various uh, levels without you know accomplishing longitudinal uh, flow between levels. Swirling pattern develops if a flow if a, if a low viscous liquid is uh, you know started in an unbuffled vessel by a centrally mounted impeller and the formation of that vortex and swirling reduce that degree of agitation and mixing. So, important point here swirling is basically a pattern which develops if a low viscous liquid is started in an unbuffled vessels by centrally mounted impeller. So, in that case uh, you will see that these two types of you know flow patterns like you know vortex formation and swirling. So, if you have that uh, more uh, vortex or swirling formation their reduction of the mixing will be there. So, as much as possible you can say that reduce that vortex or swirling then you can expect that more mixing inside the bed. So, the formation of vortex and swirling reduce the degree of agitation and mixing. Now, then how can it be you know reduced for getting that intense mixing inside the agitator. 
So, you have to prevent that swelling and vortex. There are three ways to you know reduce that uh, swelling and uh, vortex. Way one is that if you use a small vessel and if you mount off the impeller to the center of the vessel, whereas for large tank impeller can be mounted in the side of the vessel. So, for small vessel, uh, if you mount that impeller to center of the vessel, uh, then you can uh, have this you know that uh, low uh, swelling and vortex, whereas for the large tank you can uh, give the provision to mount it in the side of that vessel. Okay. And in case of uh, way 2, you will see that some other way uh, that means uh, by installing baffles, uh, you will see that some vertical strips will be you know placed inside that you know agitators which impede uh, rotational flow without uh, you know interfering with the radial or longitudinal flow. And the third way uh, you can reduce this swelling or uh, you know vortex by you know using diffuser ring with uh, turbines there. So, basically th these uh, three ways you can reduce the swelling and vortex. Then uh, we come to the point another component of that you know mixing uh, devices there it is called propellers. These propellers consist of number of blades generally three bladed design is most common for that uh, liquids. Two or more propellers are used for deep tank for directing the liquid in the same direction. Sometimes two propellers work in the opposite directions or push uh, pull to create a zone of specially high turbulence between them. Also uh, these propellers are used when strong vertical currents are desired like when heavy solid particles are to be you know kept in a suspension then you have to use this you know propellers. And uh, they are not usually used when uh, the viscosity of the liquid is uh, greater than about 50 poies. So, that you have to remember. Okay. So, propellers are uh, basically a mixing device or mixing mechanical uh, provision based on which you can get that currents of that you know fluid inside the bed in a certain uh, direction. Especially these uh, propellers are used for strong vertical currents when it will be required and when heavy solid particles are to be kept in a suspension. There will be some advantage of these propellers that uh, it will be used when high mixing capacity is required and it is effective for liquids which have maximum viscosity of 2.0 Pascal second or slurry up to 10 percent solids of fine mesh size. Effective gas liquid dispersion is possible at laboratory scale. Whereas, the disadvantage is that these are not normally effective with liquids at high viscosity greater than 5 Pascal second such as glycerin, castor oil etcetera. Then uh, another component of this increasing that you know mixing it is called turbines. So, this basically consists of a circular disc to which a number of short blades are attached. In this case blades may be straight or curved. And the diameter of the turbine ranges from 30 to 50 percent of the diameter of the vessel and turbines rotates at a lower speed than the propeller, especially 50 to 200 rpm. And flat bed turbines uh, you will see that produces radial flow and tangential flow. As the speed increases radial flow dominates and pieced blade turbine produces axial flow. Also you will see that near the impeller zone rapid currents will be generated and high turbulence and intense shear will be observed. And shear produced by turbines can be you know further enhanced by some diffuser ring that may be you know stationary perforated ring which surrounds that turbine. And diffuser ring this is used to increase the shear forces and uh, liquid passes through the perforations which reduces that rotational swelling and vortexing that is why that uh, a diffuser ring can increase the shear forces. And pieced blade turbines with 45 degree uh, down thrusting blades are used to provide strong axial flow for suspension of solids. Okay. And uh, next uh, that you have to know what is the basic or standard design of you know mixing vessel with agitators. So, there will be a standard you know design criteria to you know give you that optimum uh, you know mixing inside that agitator. 
So, here you will see that uh, standard design of that mixing vessel with agitators includes the proportions as shown in the figure. You will see there will be certain height of that mixing devices, there will be certain diameter of this agitator and you will see that uh, there will be a you know baffle and uh, there will be you know that uh, impeller, there will be a draft and uh, here uh, you will see that every you know geometrical measurement will be depending on that you know uh, diameter of that uh, vessel. So, if diameter of the vessel uh, is d t if you are considering then d a that means this diameter of this you know impeller will be uh, d t by 3 one third of d t. And from this you know base to that uh, you know impeller axial position it will be length up to uh, one third of that diameter of that vessel. And here this uh, oval shape of this here it will be uh, d t by 3 and also height will be is equal to you know diameter of this you know vessel. So, this will be optimum so that you can get better mixing. Whereas, other dimensions also given in this picture that here this uh, impeller or propeller you know blade length will be is equal to d a by 5 and also here up to this if you are using n number of or uh, different number of blade there in different positions also you can get that this you can place where dimensions are given here. So, in this way you can you know design that you know mixing vessel with agitators. So, I think you, uh, you can follow how that mixing vessel can be designed for this mixing of slurries or liquid. Now, whenever you are doing mixing in that mixing vessel, there will be a flow phenomena inside that you know vessel. There should be some certain velocity component of that impeller whenever it will be rotating inside that you know vessel. So, consider a flat bladed turbine impeller as shown in the picture. There are you know three components of that velocity of that impeller, turbine impeller. So, uh, those are radial velocity component, longitudinal velocity component and tangential or rotational velocity component. Radial velocity components here you will see that acts in a direction perpendicular to the shaft of impeller. Okay. And longitudinal velocity component acts in a direction parallel with the shaft. Whereas, this tangential or rotational velocity components will be acting in a direction tangent to a circular path around the shaft. So, here in this uh, you know uh, diagram it is given that here uh, you will see that u b t, u b t is called velocity of the blade tips and v l you will see that uh, it is uh, given tangential uh, velocity of the liquid leaving the blade tips here it is given as like this and uh, uh, VL uh, you will see that uh, radial that will be is equal to actual radial velocity of the liquid leaving the blade tips and also total or actual total velocity of the liquid leaving that blade tips that will be represented by uh, you know VL total okay VL total here. So, this will be your V L total and this is your V L tangential component and this is your radial component. Okay. So, here uh, we are getting these three components of this you know velocity of the blade tips. So, whenever we are considering this of course, some relationship of this you know tangential components of this velocity with the blade tips velocity. So, this tangential component will be is equal to some factor multiply with that you know velocity of the blade tips. So, that will be your constant value that is uh, V L T n will be equal to k into u b t. So, k is constant here okay. and also uh, here you will see that uh, uh, there will be some other uh, constant factors here this you know that actual total velocity of the liquid leaving the blade tips that will be equal to some factors of you know that velocity of the blade tips that will be regarded as alpha here. So, this V L total will be equal to alpha into U B T. Okay. So, in this way we are getting that different velocity components inside the vessel whenever fluid will be rotating at a certain speed. Now, assume that the tangential uh, liquid velocity is some fraction of the blade tip velocity which can be expressed by this equation here 1 here V L tangent uh, will be equal to k into U B T or you can represent it as k into phi d a n where n is called that you know impeller rotational speed. 
u b t will be equal to then pi d a n. Similarly, v l radial that is radial uh, components of that liquid velocity. So, it will be is equal to u b t minus v l tan into tan theta as per geometry you can get it. So, here pi d a n minus k pi d a n into tan theta after substitution of this u b t and then v l tan we are getting common on that phi d a n into 1 minus k into tan theta. So, this equation 2 will give you that radial component of that velocity and equation 1 will give you the tangential component of that velocity. Now, based on this you know radial component and you know that uh, tangential components you can expect what will be the volumetric flow rate of the liquid through the impeller which is swept out by that impeller. So, if uh, the volumetric flow rate of that liquid through the impeller can be quantified by Q, so Q will be is equal to what V L radial into A P, where A P is the area of the cylinder swept out by the tips of the impeller blades which is basically pi into d a into w. What is w? w is given that impeller blades width there. So, this is area. So, this area uh, will be used to you know swept out that uh, fluid element. So, uh, what will be the volumetric flow rate of that liquid through that impeller will be swept out that depends on that you know surface area this a p. So, a p is the area of the cylinder swept out by the tips of the impeller blades. So, which will be defined by this equation number 4. Here in this case d a is basically the impeller diameter okay, and w is the width of the blades. And then the volumetric flow rate of the liquid through the impeller then can be calculated just after substitution of those values here then after simplification it will be coming as n q small n to d a cube where w can be taken as d a by 5 as earlier that uh, you know standard design of that you know vessel that we have shown that what should be the dimension of that width. So, ultimately that uh, you know uh, volumetric flow rate of liquid through the impeller it will be coming as n q n d a to the power q. Okay. So, in this way you can calculate what will be the volumetric flow rate of the liquid through the impeller will be. So, it depends on radial component and tangential component of this you know velocity of the liquid. Therefore, the volumetric flow rate of the liquid through the impeller can be you know written as that it will be proportional to the rotational speed of the impeller and also the diameter of the impeller. But here it will be diameter cube that means volumetric flow rate will be proportional to the diameter cube. So, the ratio of the two quantities is called flow number which can be expressed as this n q that will be equal to q by n d a cube. So, that you have to remember. So, these two equations equation number 6 and 7 are very important and you have to remember it. So, what is the volumetric flow rate which is swept out by that impeller? Okay, that is basically proportional to the rotational speed of the impeller as well as that you know diameter of the impeller cube. And then uh, this mixing intensity actually will be characterized by this uh, ratio of these two quantities uh, which is called that you know flow number. This is very important. So, flow number uh, can be expressed as this ratio of this volumetric flow rate and then divided by n to d a to the power cube. So, this equation number 7. Okay. Now, in this case you have to remember that this n q value will be constant for each type of impeller whatever impeller you will be using that this constant value of n q to be maintained. For a standard flat blade turbine in a baffled vessel n q may be taken as 1.3 that you have to remember. For marine propellers generally square piece uh, uh, propellers are being used in that case this n q value always to be 0 0.5 and for a 4 blade 45 degree turbine if you are using for that marine uh, purpose then here they are w by d a will be equal to 1 by 6 and n q will be equal to 0 0.87. For a standard flat blade turbine in a baffled vessel that n q should be equal to 0 0.92 into d t by d a. So, if you change the d a or d t then accordingly what will be the flow number to be there. So, the total flow can be calculated as then q t will be equal to what just after substitution of n q value here 
then it will be coming as 0 0.92 dt by dA into n into dA cube. So, it is applicable only for dt by dA will be equal to 2 to 4. So, these are some important points that you have to remember. Next, whenever you are doing mixing in that mixing vessel, you have to calculate what will the power consumption to drive that impeller in the turbine mixer. At turbulent condition, if you are considered for that mixing, the power required to drive that impeller for the mixing can be calculated based on this equation 8. Here power will be equal to flow rate that is produced by impeller and also kinetic energy per unit volume of the fluid or you can denote it by like this here P will be equal to Q into E k. P is called power and Q is called flow rate produced by impeller and E k is the kinetic energy per unit volume of fluid. So, in this case uh, then Q we have already uh, calculated that Q will be equal to N Q into N into D A cube okay? and then kinetic energy will be equal to half of rho V L square. Now, V L is the total uh, velocity of the liquid. And then here uh, n q into n dA cube into half of rho here V L total this is basically that uh, some uh, fraction of uh, that velocity at the blade tip. So, that is why we can write here alpha into u B T. So, V L total is equal to alpha into B T that we have shown earlier. So, in this case after simplification it is coming as what is that rho n cube dA to the power phi into alpha square phi square by 2 into n cube where u b t to be you know written as phi n d a. Okay. So, this is basically that after substitution of this you know q and e k value and q already you know that that uh, you can calculate it from the you know flow number. And then uh, this can be uh, written in dimensionless form as p by rho n cube d a to the power 5 that will be equal to alpha square phi square by 2 into n cube. That means, in the equation number 9 here this equation is basically written uh, just it is uh, in the dimensionless form uh, by equation number 10 or this dimensionless uh, component that is p by rho n cube dA to the power 5 this is dimensionless. So, here it will be uh, denoted by n p it is called power number okay. and this is basically then alpha square pi square by 2 into n cube. So, this power number is basically a function of flow number n cube. n p is called the power number which is defined as then n p is equal to p by rho n cube d a to the power 5 like this here. Okay. So, therefore, power required to drive impeller in terms of as like this p will be equal to you know n p rho n cube d a to the power 5. So, this is power is equal to this is power number and flow number it will be coming as like this here this n p will be equal to that means power number will be as a function of flow number. So, power total power as a function of you know power number. So, total power consumption will be equal to power number into rho n cube into d a to the power 5. So, for a standard 6 bladed turbine n cube will be equal to 1.3 this n cube will be equal to 1.3 and if alpha is taken as 0 0.9 the power number n p will be equal to 5.2. So, this calculation that you have to understand. In this case also you have to remember some important notes that for low Reynolds number if you are operating that you know mixing in the vessel if there is a low Reynolds number the power number is inversely proportional to the Reynolds number and power number for both the baffled and unbaffled condition will be same that you have to remember. For higher Reynolds number if Reynolds number is greater than 10 thousands the power number will be independent of Reynolds number and viscosity will not be a factor. For a baffled tank for higher Reynolds number, where Reynolds number is greater than 10 thousands, mixing time factor is almost constant at a value of 5. Now, the power number n p is analogous to a friction factor or a drag coefficient, remember it. It is proportional to the ratio of the drag force acting on a unit area of the impeller and the inertial stress. That is the flow of momentum associated with the bulk motion of the fluid. 
where this Reynolds number will be defined by this equation here n into dA to square rho by mu and uh, the friction uh, factor uh, which is related to that you know power number. So, the, if there are more friction of course, that power consumption will be more because they are you know that interfacial friction that means flow will give you the more friction between that wall of that vessel as well as baffles or other mechanical devices or impellers. So, in that case this power number will be more and also uh, there will be a you know some mixing time factor okay, which will give you that intensity of the mixing okay, based on that you know operational mode whether it is laminar flow or turbulent flow. So, that mixing time factor is basically a function of that how long you are you know operating that mixing and also what will be the rotational speed also what is the geometry of that you know uh, standard you know vessels. So, this uh, mixing time factor can be expressed by this equation from which you can easily calculate what be the mixing time factor. Let us do an example based on those theories here uh, one problem as per gate 2004 it is given like to keep the power input constant for a starred vessel operating under fully developed turbulent flow conditions where uh, constant power number will be there if the impeller diameter is decreased by 20 percent what the factor by which the impeller speed should be decreased. Basically in this case uh, you have to calculate that you know factor of that rotational speed impeller speed there okay, whatever increased there. So, here to keep the power input constant for a uh, vessel operating uh, under fully developed turbulent conditions. So, first of all you consider that what will be the power number. Okay. So, power number is defined as P by rho n q by dA to the power 5 which will be constant. So, we can write P proportional to n q dA to the power 5. So, this will be here. So, from this you know equation we can write initially what will be the impeller speed and what will be the diameter of that you know impeller and finally, what will be the impeller speed and diameter of the impeller. So, since this you know power number will be constant, so we can have this value n 1 cube into d a 1 to the power 5 is equal to n 2 cube is equal to d a to the power 5 from this you know equation. So, given that here d a 2 is given in the second case this diameter of the impeller is given that will be 1.2 times of you know impeller diameter which is used earlier initially. So, in this case uh, if we uh, you know do the ratio of this n 2 by n 1 then we are having here from this equation we are having d a 1 by d a to the power 5 by 3 where d a 1 by d a 2 is given from in this equation. So, ultimately 1 by 1.2 whole to the power 5 by 3. So, the impeller speed should be decreased as 1.2 to the power 5 by 3. So, this is the problem which we can solve like this. Okay. And then uh, another problem here it is also given in 2006 gate examination. Here it is said that the mixing of rubber in latex solution was studied in a unbuffled mixer in the laboratory. The mixer was equipped with a 6 uh, blade turbine impeller. A tire company scales this process up using a baffle tank. The baffle tank has 3 times the diameter of the lab scale mixer. If uses the same type of impeller operated at the same speed, then the relevant shape factors will also be same. So, assuming that laminar conditions prevail both the cases, what will be the power requirement in the industrial scale mixer. So, basically that you know laboratory scale and industrial scale mixer is there. So, in both the cases they told that the shape factors will be same and also same type of impeller to be used with the same speed okay. and the baffle tank has 3 times the diameter of the lap scale mixer in industry. Okay. So, in this case uh, we can say that P proportional to n cube if diameter is same of that impeller. So, P proportional to n cube that means P 1 by n 1 cube that will be equal to P 2 by n 2 cube. So, P 2 will be equal to P 1 into n 2 by n 1. 
So, P 2 will be equal to P 1 into 3 by 1 into speed is 3 times it is told that here 3 times baffle tank has 3 times of the diameter of the lap skull ok. And also uh, we, we are having here then it will be uh, then 3 times means here 27 times of P 1 ok. So, power requirement in the industrial scale mixer will be 27 times that of the lap scale mixer ok. So, here company scales process of using baffle tank the baffle tank has 3 times the diameter of the lap scale mixer no it is actually 3 times of the rotation rotation of the impeller rotation of impeller impeller ok 3 times. So, that is why we are we are having this power requirement would be you know 20 times of this. Let us do another example here this is uh, given in uh, gate 2008 consider the scale up of a cylindrical vapor uh, vessel configured to have the standard geometry that is height is equal to diameter in order to maintain an equal rate of mixing under same power input per unit volume under turbulent conditions for a Newtonian fluid what would be the ratio of the agitator speed. See here again that power number is P by rho n cube d a to the power 5 it will be constant. So, P proportional to n cube d a to the power 5 for the tank d a is given is volume of the tank is V. So, V will be equal to like this pi by 4 d a square into h that means, V is proportional to d a to the power cube. So, P by V will be equal to proportional to n cube d a square. So, according to the given condition the power input per unit volume will be constant. So, we can write here n cube d a square that will be equal to constant. So, we can write n 1 cube d a 1 square that will be equal to n 2 cube d a 2 square it will be n 2 by n 1 will be equal to d a 1 by d a 2 whole to the power 2 by 3 ok. So, uh, we are having this uh, after substitution of those values here then it will be coming as n 2 will be equal to here 2.52. Okay, fine. And then next uh, problem is that it is given in 2019 gate examination. It is said that a disc turbine is used to steer a, a liquid in a baffle tank. To design the agitator experiments are performed in a lab scale model with a turbine diameter of 0 0.05 meter and a turbine impeller speed of 600 rpm. The liquid viscosity is 0.001 Pascal second while the liquid density is 1000 kg per meter cube. The actual applications has a turbine diameter of 0.5 meter and impeller speed of 600 rpm. A liquid density is 0.1 Pascal second and a liquid density of 1000 kg per meter cube. If the power required in the lab scale model is P 1 and the estimated power for the actual application is P 2 then what is the ratio of P 2 by P 1. Here see two types of uh, you know model we are having one is lab scale model and another is prototype model. In lab scale model it is given the diameter is 0 0.05 impeller speed is 600 rpm liquid viscosity is 0 0.001 Pascal second and liquid density is 1000 kg per meter cube. So, Reynolds number will be like this 15 into 10 to the power uh, 5 ok. And uh, prototype it is given diameter is 0 0.5 meter impeller speed 600 rpm liquid viscosity 0 0.1 uh, Pascal second liquid density is 1000 kg per meter cube and Reynolds number here again it will be you know that 15 into 10 to the power 5. So, for Reynolds number if it is 10 thousands then we can say that this power number will be constant as we have uh, you know shown in the you know special note there that you have to remember. So, in that case we are considering that here P 1 by rho 1 n 1 into d a 1 to the power 5 it will be equal to P 2 by rho 2 n 2 cube into d a to the power 5. So, from this uh, equation you can write this since this power number will be constant. So, here in this case rho 1 and rho 2 are same and n 1 and n 2 are same. So, finally, you can say that P 2 by P 1 will be, it will be equal to d a 2 by d a 1 to the power 5 that will be is equal to then after substitution of d a 2 and d a 1 here we are getting 10 to the power 5. So, p 2 by p 1 that means ratio of power number for prototype to that you know power number to the lab scale model it will be 
you know 10 to the power 5. Next we are talking about that mixing time. You will see that whenever the turbine will be rotating at a, a certain you know speed during that rotation of turbine for mixing at a turbulent condition it is said to be a complete mixing that means 99 percent completion of that you know mixing for that particular phases in the vessel. If the fluid completes about 5 times circulation. So, this is the basic concept here. For such cases mixing time can be predicted by the following correlation for a standard 6 bladed turbine the correlation is given here it depends on that is diameter of the tube and diameter of the impeller. So, mixing time that will be equal to here 5 into V by Q that uh, after substitution you will get this uh, this is the value and finally, you can say that here after substitution of Q value you can get this or it can be written as N T T to D A by D T whole square into D T by D S that will be equal to constant that will be equal to 4.3. Okay. So, here in this graph it is shown that how that mixing time will be changing with respect to Reynolds number. If you are increasing that you know turbulency then mixing time also will be decreasing. So, according to that based on different uh, geometry of that you know vessel you will get that you know different mixing time factor as a function of Reynolds number where this Reynolds number will be defined by this equation. Now, let us do an example here also. Suppose a mixing vessel of 0 0.3 meter in diameter contains a 6 blade straight blade turbine 0 0.1 meter in diameter which will be set 1 impeller diameter above the vessel floor and rotating at a speed of 60 rpm. In this case it is proposed to use this vessel for neutralizing a dilute aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide with a stoichiometrically equivalent quantity of concentrated nitric acid. In that case the final depth of the liquid in the vessel is to be 0 0.3 meter. If all the acid is added in one time then how long will it take for complete neutralization? Density of the liquid is given and viscosity of the liquid is given. So, in this case uh, you have to find out what will the T T value that means here how long it will take to complete you know mixing to get complete mixing. So, here D T is given, D A is given, N is also given okay, that means rotational speed is given, Reynolds number then you can calculate it is coming 1 into 10 to the power 3 and since from the graph we are having the relationship N T T versus Reynolds number. So, here N T T you can calculate from this graph here if Reynolds number is 10 what is that 1 into 10 to the power 3 which will give you the corresponding value of N T T. So, it will be coming as N T T at this Reynolds number as 100 from this figure. So, from which you can calculate what will be the T T value. So, it is coming around 100 second. I think you understood this problem here. So, based on this mixing time you can calculate you know how long it will be required to get the complete mixing of that solution in a vessel. In this case you have to calculate what will be the Reynolds number that means whether it is the laminar flow or turbulent flow that will give you based on that Reynolds number. Once you get this Reynolds number based on that Reynolds number you will be able to calculate what will be the mixing time factor and this mixing time factor can be obtained from this you know graph as shown in the slide. So, I think uh, you got this point. Now, another important mechanism to uh, get that you know mixing of this you know fluid element inside the vessel it is called draft tube. This draft tube is a tube which is mounted around the impeller or mounted immediately above the turbine as shown in the uh, picture here. When the direction and velocity of the flow to the suction of the impeller are to be controlled this draft tubes are generally used and the device is useful when the high shear at the impeller itself is desired. As an example you can say for making certain type of emulsion with particles where solid particles tend to float at the surface of the liquid in the vessel are to be dispersed in the liquid. So, for a given power input they reduce the rate of flow 
that is why this drop tube will be more effective to you know have that intense mixing of the fluid element where basically that certain type of emulsion with the particles are to be prepared. So, uh, in this lecture then we learned here what is the standard design of that mixing vessel especially for the mixing of slurries, particles, uh, liquid liquid or immiscible liquids there and what are the basic you know components of that uh, mixing vessel and how that mixing vessel components will give you the intense mixing based on that you know impeller speed also impeller geometry also that vessel geometry. The power number and flow number will be interrelated. This power can be calculated from this power number and uh, which is actually related to the flow number. How that power number is related or power how it is related to the geometry of the standard design of that vessel very important. So, you can easily design just by keeping that power number constant okay, or using that special type of impeller based on the flow condition. So, I think you understood this concept of that you know fluid mixing in a vessel and also what is the standard design for that. So, this module I think is enough and the next uh, module we will uh, try to uh, discuss more about that you know solid fluid operation there and the next module we will start with that fluidization operation. Uh, in the next lecture then we will start with that basic understanding and application of the fluidization. So, thank you for giving your attention, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.